When we look back a generation or two, people worked really hard to get information which they sought for. It meant spending numerous hours poring over journals, books, articles and whatnot. But after the invention of internet, this process has only become simpler, more intuitive and very less tiring. But yet when we look back, the process in which information was sought after on the internet itself has changed over the past uh, three decades or so. And these are namely browsing, searching and recommendation, which we are going to cover in this video. Consider this. You are in a library and you want to pick out a few books on history. So you walk up to the librarian and maybe tell him about this particular book that you're looking for. But unfortunately, this library doesn't have any bookkeeping software or any register where they have written down the names of these books. So he simply points you towards the history section. And now you are surrounded by this huge column of books about history. And you have to manually sort through all of them to find out something which might be closer to the topic that you are looking for you may or may not find the information that you were looking for. This is how the earliest forms of browsing worked on the internet. The earliest forms of browsing happened via something known as portal websites, such as America Online, which is now not functional anymore. So how they worked was kind of similar to the editorial team in a newspaper. They had a collection of large centralized data, which were curated by human editors and they decided which information went up and so forth. You couldn't really um, seek out a certain information unless you knew the exact URL or the uniform resource locator of that page. Also, these uh, portal websites didn't record any data on you. They were not collecting human data. Around this time, the first web browser called Mosaic was developed as well. It was inspired by Sir Tim Berners-Lee's uh, World Wide Web, which works only on Next computers. Mosaic became the first easy to install browser which could be installed on any computer. Well, most of the computers during that time. Essentially, it became a window to access almost everything on the internet. Users no longer were now dependent only on portal sites or the URLs. They had, well, they had the independence and the freedom to access any website of their choice via the browser. Post Mosaic, other websites such as Netscape, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox were also developed during this time, which could be installed and downloaded almost on any computer. Now think about it. You go to another library and instead of asking the librarian where the history section is, you ask him a specific query. You want the book Hitler by Ian Kershaw. And this library is more advanced in its technology and they have a better bookkeeping software. So the librarian locates the book for you and hands it to you. This is how search worked. The search function which formed the second period of the internet uh, came in around mid 1990s. The web became too big to be indexed manually as more and more people started to set up their own websites and blogs to be published online. The search engine solved this issue of locating information across a wide vast sea of web content. The user has an idea of approximately what they are looking for and uh, so to seek out this information they have these certain keywords in mind. And they put in these keywords in the search bar and the search engines are able to locate approximately the articles which they are looking for. This is how the search function worked. They are now not merely browsing through the wake content that's already readily available on the internet. The advent of search engines like Yahoo, Google, Bing saw a huge shift in how information, product and services were sought after. Searching became more efficient and very accurate with only one major drawback. The user must know the exact term or the keyword which they wish to search for. Uh, like if they have something in their mind but the keyword is not exact, then the search would be irrelevant. So this is the only reason search became uh, less user friendly but well, people didn't know at that time what they were missing out on. Now this problem was solved by the recommendation algorithm 
which formed the third wave of internet and is the most recent one. This change started with the invention of this new uh, recommendation algorithm called Sybil by Google, which was invented around 2011. Sib now, Sybil makes predictions and recommendations on the basis of uh, user behavior across various Google platforms like uh, Gmail and YouTube. Sybil was a revolutionary change on how content started to get displayed for different users. Users no longer had to seek out information. Instead, information came willingly to them. It removed the requirement to think about specific keywords to type onto the search bar or to subscribe to channel. Recommendation infers to the user's preferences based on their previous behavior. In many instances, when users didn't have a clear-cut view of exactly what they wanted, the recommendation algorithm gave them suggestions based on their previous behavior or their previous search history. It also became more intuitive about predicting the user's exact query. Google further optimized the recommendation system of Sybil to form Google Brain, which further leveraged new advances in deep learning. In the years between 2014 and 2017, it was noted that the video consumption on YouTube had increased by about 20 times because uh, they had introduced something called recommended videos on the homepage. It's like from the earlier example, now that the librarian knows you and understands your taste, the next time you walk into the library, he or she starts suggesting you books on history which you might like, maybe something on German history, because the last time you picked up the book Hitler. The importance of the recommendation algorithm was specially noticed in e-commerce platforms such as Amazon, because um, here what they started to do was they started showing customers things that you might like based on your early purchase and they noticed an increase in sales once they started doing this this major shift from people looking for information to information looking for people gave rise to new companies such as tiktok tiktok took inspiration from youtube's video recommendation and amazon's product recommendation to start a platform that generates a continuous stream of short 15 second completely customized videos to each viewer's taste and liking. For example, if a user A likes watching cat videos, then based on TikTok's AI's calculation of other similar users, it will recommend funny animal videos to user A as well. The internet is now beginning to flood with applications which instead of proactively pulling search information from users, it pushes information onto them based on similar queries made earlier. The AI is constantly collecting user information in order to make the recommendation more and more accurate. The internet is now advancing rapidly to become more and more intuitive. In the future, we might be surprised at how information finds us. For example, we might only have to think about something for it to start getting displayed on our screens. I know it sounds too far-fetched, but it might not be. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel.